Welcome. In this video, I'll be talking about our work, Perforated Page, Supporting Fragmented Memory Allocation for Large Pages. This is work by Chung Hyun Park, myself, Sang Cha, Bo Byung Kim, Professor Young Jin Kwon, Professor David Blackshaffer, and Professor Jae Ko. This is joint work by Uppsala University and KAIST. First, let's talk about the benefits and the challenges of large pages. First, I'll talk about large pages and performance. Second, about the difficulty of making large pages. And finally, the overheads that come with large pages. Let's start with the performance. TLB misses her performance. Large pages increase the TLB coverage by 512 times, aiming to improve performance. This is illustrated in the figure below. The figure shows many consecutive regular page mappings. With large pages, a single address mapping can represent the many regular mappings. This increase in TLB coverage results in less TLB misses, leading to performance improvements. And the prior work has found up to 68% of performance improvement by using large pages. But large pages are not easily, easily acquired. They are difficult to make. Large pages are made up of consecutive regular pages. And the multiple mappings can be replaced with a single large page mapping. However, there are a couple of strict requirements. All 512 pages must be contiguous and have no holes. However, in the figure, there is a hole preventing a large page allocation. Large pages can only be made when they are aligned to two megabyte boundaries. The figure shows a contiguous region, but it does not meet the alignment requirement. Finally, all pages that make up the large page must have the same homogeneous permissions. The figure shows the last page having a different permission, preventing large page allocation. These requirements introduce overheads associated with using large pages. The first overhead is memory compaction. As the system executes, the memory is constantly fragmented. To keep allocating large contiguous memory for large pages, the operating system must compact or defragment memory. The figure on the right shows the physical memory where neither the top nor the bottom region can be used as a large page. The operating system compacts memory by moving a used page represented by the blue boxes and moves it into the free space in the lower two megabyte region. Now, the top two megabyte region is free and can be allocated as a large page. Such memory compaction can be costly and has been found to consume up to 35% of execution time. Immovable pages make compaction even harder. Immovable pages come from kernel allocations and IO buffers and page caches, etc. A kernel compilation uh, generates lots of page caches, generating lots of immovable pages. To check the severity of immovable pages, we check the physical memory state after the kernel compilation, which generates, about, uh, which generates a lot of page caches. We found that about half of the allocated physical pages, the pages that we allocated, were in a two megabyte region co-located with immovable pages, meaning these two megabyte regions could not be compacted. The figure in the bottom illustrates the pr problem of immovable pages where both two megabyte regions have immovable pages represented as gray boxes. Even if the operating system is to try compacting, the immovable pages prevent reclaiming free space for a large page. The next overhead of large pages is memory bloating. Sparse access and use within large pages lead to wasting memory. The figure shows a case where an application actually only accesses two of the pages. With large pages, the entire two megabyte region is physically allocated to the application, and in this case, resulting in the other unused pages to be wasted. To see how severe memory, blo memory bloating was, we, we ran a Redis application setup with 4 million keys and a 16 kilobyte uh, values. This experiment resulted in 20% more memory consumption when using large pages due to memory bloating. However, large pages also uh, provided 45% less TLB misses. To summarize, large pages provide better TLB coverage. That translates into less TLB misses, improving performance. 
However, large pages are difficult to make as they require contiguous two megabyte regions of free space and also require homogeneous permissions within the large page. Finally, compaction is required to generate contiguous free two megabyte regions. However, compaction is costly and furthermore obstructed by immovable pages. Memory bloating, another overhead of large pages, also results in more memory consumptions. The question we wanted to answer was, can we get the performance benefits of large pages without the difficulties and overheads? We propose perforated pages. We map perforated pages for large pages that need special care, such as holes or different permissions. And for the parts of the large page that need special care, we punch holes. The majority of pages in the perforated page uses the large page mapping. Whole pages offer fine-grained flexible mappings. In essence, perforated pages are large pages that support holes. It provides large page translation for perforated page. And holes are punched where needed to relax the contiguity constraints. Perforated pages can support large pages with different permissions using hole mappings, shown by the red arrow in the figure. Perforated pages can be allocated in the presence of immovable pages, and a perforated page is allocated, and the hole is punched at the location of the immovable page. The hole is then mapped to point to another regular page. We found that when trying to allocate memory, half were allocatable in large pages, and the other half which have immovable pages scattered around were further allocatable when we used perforated pages. So in essence, 50% of the allocations were large pages and the, other, the remaining 50% were capable of being allocated as perforated pages. Finally, perforated pages can be used to pre prevent bloating. Holes can be punched to conserve unused pages. The figure on the right shows a perforated page opportunity with an un unused page at the top. The remaining three pages can be mapped to the physical region to the right. A perforated page mapping is created and the hole is punched in the unused part of the perforated page. For the prior Redis example, we were actually able to use this technique to prevent memory bloating and at the same time achieve 17% uh, TLB miss reduction. Next, let's look at how perforated pages work. First, we have a four kilobyte regular page mapping. Next, we have a two megabyte large page mapping. Finally, we have a perforated page that maps to a large page region. And a hole in the perforated page that maps to another regular, large, uh, regular page. Let's go through the basic translation steps of existing translations and perforated translations. The gray area in the center show the page tables. Current systems have four levels of page tables. However, in this illustration, I omit the level four and the level three page tables for simplicity. All translations shown here will traverse through the level four and level three, then come to the level two page table. Let's first look at regular page mappings. The regular page goes through the level two and the level one page table and is translated into the regular page. Next, a re regular large page, a two megabyte large page, goes through the level two and then is translated into a large page. Now, let's take a look at a perforated page. First, we'll take a look at translating part of the perforated page. We'll show translating whole pages afterwards. The level two page table entry is looked up. At this point, the translation needs to know if you are actually accessing a hole or part of the perfor perforated page. So are we accessing a hole or not a hole? In this work, we use a hole bitmap that tracks whether a page is a whole page or not. The whole bitmap has a 0.003% memory capacity, capacity overhead and it tracks 
whether each physical page is a whole or not. Now, continuing from uh, translating the perforated page, the whole bitmap is now looked up to check if it's a whole or not. And as we are part, uh, as we are accessing part of the perforated page, the bit is not set. Finally, the address to the large page stored in the perforated level two page table entry is used to finish the translation. For the perforated page, we use large page mappings. Next, let's look at how a whole page is translated. Again, we look up the perforated page table entry in the level two page table. As this is an access to a perforated page table entry, the whole bitmap is checked again to see if the translation is to a whole or not to a whole. In this case, it is a whole. At this point, there is one problem that needs to be solved. Where do we keep the address to the whole page? We cannot store any more data in the perforated page table entry because it is already holding the address for the perforated large page mapping. As a whole page is regular for, for kilobyte mapping, we use the existing level one page table to hold the translations for the whole page. Next, we introduce a shadow level two page table. And here we store a page table entry that points to the level one page table. Resuming our translation, we were looking up the whole bitmap. Now the whole bitmap finds that the translation is to a whole page. The page table entry in the shadow level two page table is accessed and the corresponding level one page table is used to finally translate the whole page. To summarize, let's compare different page walks. First, let's compare large page walks with perforated page walks. Perforated page walks need an additional access to the whole bitmaps shown in the table below. Furthermore, let's compare the coverage of different types of mappings in the table on the bottom right. Large pages translate, large page translations have coverage of 512X of regular mappings and perforated pages have a coverage of 500 minus the number of holes in the perforated page times. Thus, the less holes in a perforated page, the more coverage of perforated page mapping offers, leading to better performance. Next, let's compare a regular page walk and a whole page walk. The whole page walk additionally accesses the whole bitmap and the shadow L2 entry compared to the regular page walk. In terms of coverage, both whole and regular page have a coverage of 1x. Now let's go over how we mitigate the overhead of additional accesses. Firstly, the perforated page table entry in the level two page table points to a large page memory. This frees up eight bits, which we can use to implement a bitmap filter. The bitmap filter is constructed from the actual whole bitmaps by compressing the 512 bits of whole bitmaps for the perforated page into a eight bit filter. Let's look at an example. The bits on the left of the perforated page illustrates the whole bitmap values, and to the left of that, the filter values. If the program accesses the bottom part of the perforated page, which has a filter value of zero, the translations to that region will skip the bitmap access, as this region of the perforated page definitely has no holes. Next, we cache the whole bitmaps in the TLB to speed up the translation. Our design splits a whole bitmap of a perforated page into 16 TLB entries, and only whole bitmaps which are accessed are actually cached in the TLB. Finally, whole page walks also need to access the shadow level two entry. In our work, the shadow level two entry cache in the page table walker cache to speed up accessing the level two shadow entry. To evaluate perforated pages, we used GEM5 in system call emulation mode and used an out of order core. We modeled the TLB structure 
after the Intel Skylake microarchitecture. First, to show raw performance gains of the TLB, we evaluated a micro benchmark that does random access, resulting in a worst case access pattern for the TLB. Next, we evaluated real world benchmarks from the spec CPU suit and the biobench suit. Let's take a look at the micro benchmark results. The graph shows the performance improvement on the y axis, thus, higher the better. The x axis shows a range of memory fragmentation. The left side shows that the application allocates the entire space with large pages. The right side shows all the two megabyte regions frag are fragmented and thus cannot be allocated by traditional large pages. The black line shows the performance of only using four kilobyte mappings and this performance does not change across the x-axis. As a result, all the results are normalized to the four kilobyte all mapping performance. The blue dotted line presents the large page TLB that are available in current systems. As we move to the right, more two megabyte regions cannot be allocated in large pages. And so the performance of the TLB drops to meet the baseline four kilobyte performance. Our proposed perforated TLB is shown as the green line. As perforated pages are able to allocate perforated pages for regions that are fragmented, it can retain a lot of the performance of large pages. With half the me memory allocated as large pages and the other half as perforated pages, as we saw uh, after a kernel build or co kernel compilation, we see a 59% performance improvement with perforated pages. Next on the right, we show the breakdown of the TLB entries resident in the level two TLB. For the baseline page, uh, baseline large page TLB and our perforated page. The x-axis is consistent with the x-axis on the prior graph. The y-axis shows the percentage of each type of TLB entry. The baseline TLB shows a gradual drop of large page entries, whereas Perforated pages show perforated pages stepping up to fill in the loss of large pages. With perforated pages, the level two TLB also holds bitmaps, which is worth caching as it aids perforated pages to provide more effective TLB coverage. Thus, a perforated page TLB shows a better TLB coverage even with all two megabyte regions uh, fragmented. Let's take a look at real, real world benchmark results. The, graph, the graphs have same X and Y axis as the uh, graph from the micro benchmark. Perforated pages perform between two to 11% better than the baseline large page TLB. And furthermore, perforated, perforated pages can retain a lot of the performance offered by ideal large page mapping scenario. Performing up to 93 to 99% of the ideal allocation scenario. The Tiger benchmark sees a gradual drop in performance. And this is because more prefer perforated pages results in more bitmaps and hold pages, which put, put more pressure on the TLB, resulting in more TLB misses. There are more things in the paper, such as details about the TLB that I dis didn't discuss in the video, operating system related discussions, support for virtualizations, more evaluations, and of course, more curves in the graphs, and many other things. So please take a look at our paper if you're interested. To conclude my talk, large pages offer performance. However, it comes with challenges. We propose perforated page to overcome the challenges posed by large pages. Perforated page provides large page translations for most of the perforated page, while whole pages provide four kilobyte page translation. Perforated page reuses most of the existing TLB and page table, requiring minimal changes to the existing hardware. We find that perforated page can offer 93 to 99% performance of an ideal large page mapping. If you want to learn more about how we offer near large page performance, but at the same time overcome the difficulties and overheads, we invite you to read our paper. Thank you for your attention.